All right, so we are on uh, section two of that little tiny book that you are supposed to have and keep, keep bringing that back to class. Um, again, this is going to be the most important thing for any kind of probability statistics class, that's another vocab term. So we're gonna make sure we hit those pretty hard today. Um, so the first thing is called an outcome. And an outcome is the result of an experiment. So if I was rolling and they call them number cubes because you're not allowed to call them dice, I will refer to them as dice. They ask us not to because they think that dice refers to gambling. Whatever. Number cube, dice, same thing. So that's why you'll see them referred to as number cubes. They really just mean dice. Uh, an outcome. It's the result of an experiment. So if I said um, two, is that an outcome for rolling a dice? Yes. It's seven. Not a standard die, right? A standard die goes from the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. So seven would not be one of my outcomes because it's not a possibility. Does that make sense? Now, when you list all of the outcomes together, we call that the sample space. So if someone asks you for the sample space, you list all of the possible outcomes. That makes sense. Now, an event is an outcome or a set of outcomes in a sample space. So if I say, in the event that you roll a two, right? Like that you, I picked one of my outcomes and I said, this is the one I'm talking about. I've taken one of the outcomes from the sample space and I chose that one. That's my event. That's what I'm going to be referring to when I'm asking you some of the questions I'm going to be asking. Does that make sense? Now, probability. Probability of an event is ratio. When you see the word ratio, Nick, what do you think right away, bud? Ratio. Hmm? Okay, and how do we compare them? It's going to be a fraction, or a ratio is going to be a fraction. An event um, is a ratio, the, I'm sorry, the probability of an event is a ratio of the number of desired outcomes to the total number of outcomes. So, if I said rolling a two, what would be my probability? What's the desire? How many outcomes are there? How many chances are rolling a two? Six, right? One. How many total are there? Six. So it's one out of six. Now we're going to do some things here. And we're going to go a little bit farther because I just like to at least preview this. We're going to get to this probably more in depth. But what happens is there are these things called odds. How many of you guys have ever seen that? Odds. Or you've heard, what are the odds of that happening? Actually, that's not the best way of writing. So there's something that are called odds. So odds are a way of people tricking because they want your money. They want it to make it look better than it really is. So most people think odds and probability are the same. Well, let me explain the difference to you. You tell me if it's If I said the probability of um, you rolling a two is one out of six. The odds of rolling a two are one out of five. Because odds are the desired outcome over every other outcome. Well, there's we're gonna we're gonna get to it more, I believe, up here later on. But I wanted to just preface, like, show you this because that's what people do. To you. If you don't truly understand words or map, they present material to you. So like if I said the odds of you winning this are one to two, what do most people think their chances are winning on? They go, I got a 50-50 shot. No, you don't. The odds of you winning are one to two. That means you have one chance of getting it correct, two chances of getting it wrong, 
your probability is one out of three, which is a 33% chance of winning versus a 50% chance. But when I present it to you like you have a 50-50 shot, how many more people will take that shot than when I present it as a 33% chance? So when you don't know things, you don't know words or math or things like that, people will cheat you out of your money. It's just one of the things I like to show kids that how many people are out there thinking they have a 50-50 shot and they keep losing and they don't understand it and that person keeps racking up some money. You think that happens a lot? Look at how many times you see odds on the back of something versus probability. You with me on that? Um, Now, with this, so, are we good with these words up here? Everybody feels comfortable for us to move on. Um, is there such thing as an unfair coin? Yeah, you guys have heard of a, like, two-headed coin? There's a two-headed coin that people use to, like, again, cheat, right? They'd be like, hey, all right, we'll flip for it. But here's the coin. Heads or tails? Heads? Well, it's heads, I win, right? And if they would flip it 100 times, it's going to be heads every time. So, um, <coughs> the way that you write it is like this. Probability, and with this little parenthesis, this little parenthesis, this means probability of heads, where this means probability of tails. They'll label that. They'll say P, almost kind of like P of T, Probability of T, probability of tails. Does that make sense how they write that? So when you see that, you understand we're talking about probability for this. Okay. Um, a probability model is when you, you take it and you put it in a graph like this. And you put all the different chances of the probability of you getting heads versus the probability of getting tails. And look at the probability. It's a one half versus a what? So this is. Um, we're going to find out what that is called since they're both the same in just a minute. But this is called a probability model. Everybody good so far? All right, so suppose you roll a number cube. Um, and they ask you for the sample space. Sample space is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Yes? What is the probability of rolling a 5? Is this correct? No. This should be what? 1 over, because this should be the total, which includes the desired and the undesired, right? So it should, they, it's a typo. All throughout this book, just a typo. Should be a 6. What's the probability of rolling an even number? 3 out of 6. Um, whoa, whoa. I'll look at that. I say yes, reduce it. Right. Um, the only reason that this is nice is because this, when you don't reduce it, tells you how many there are and how many total there is. But when you break it down, it's still going to be a one half. You got to change. Um, they don't reduce it, so um, I'll talk to people who are study more of that, the statistics, and ask them what they normally do. I believe you always reduce, yes, is what I've always been taught. Um, now, this thing we're going to get into, now watch how they can change this, because they can make this a little more tricky than what you're thinking. Right now we're thinking, what's the chance of you getting a 2? What's the chance of you getting a 5? Well, what about, what's the probability of rolling a number greater than 3? Well, would we include 3? Because it says what? So again, how can they be tricky with this? They can say greater than, or they can say greater than, or equal to. And it totally changes your answer, right? And 3 out of 6 is not the same as 4 out of 6. And so when they say greater than 3, my numbers are 4, 5, and 6. So it's 3 out of 6. Yes? And then when they say less than or equal to 3, it's 1, 2, and 3. So it's 3 out of 6. In just a minute, we're going to realize that these are called complements. 
What happens is, when I take an event, is there just all, all, only one event that can happen? Can there be multiple things that can make that event true? Like, greater than three, how many different things are possible? Three, right? There's three possible, probable, the ones that I want, outcomes that make that true, okay? So, when you take an event, you have a, this, this amount of outcomes that are good, they're, they're desirable. Then you have another set that are the undesired. Are you with me? Those two events together make up the full sample space. Do you understand what I just said? All the possibilities of the outcomes. When I take the event and I take the unevent, the not happenings, together they make up the whole sample space. Those are called complements of each other. So if I said find the complement to P being greater than 3, the complement is P being less than or equal to 3. Does that make sense? Together, they make the whole sample size. They are called complements to each other, and their probabilities will always add up to what? 1. Because if I said, what's the probability of this happening or this not happening? That's 100%, right? If I said, what's the probability of it being less than 3 or greater than or equal to 3? Um, 100%, right? Like, if you say that or. So those, are you guys with me on this? Okay? When that happens, that's how you, that's one of the ways you can tell if something's a complement. They add up to 1. So here's the way you can use that. If I give you an event, and I say it's, you know, let's say the chances of you pulling a boy from this class are 3 out of 21. What are the chances of the complement happening? It's not true, by the way. I'm just this up. What's the chance of the complement happening? 18 out of 21. And what would that event be? What would I be pulling out of here? Hopefully there's no dogs or cats or anything. Right? So it would be a dog or a, a girl. Sometimes people call dogs, whatever. You with me on that? Guys following. Compliments. So you don't so when I give you an event, you can find its complement without even having to know how many this, the outcome total there are in that. You can figure it out. Because they have to add up to the total amount. Right, they add up to it. Exactly. Um, now, do you see this guy right here? This is a probability model. What do you notice about all the probabilities? And that is going to be called a uniform probability model. It's called a uniform probability model because the probability for each outcome are equal. So are you going, well, that has to happen. No. Do you remember the little problems? And a lot of this should be hopefully something you've seen, but maybe your brain is a little bit able, you know, I get it a little bit better now. You're going to see some problems here. You're going to go, oh, my gosh, I remember doing that in third grade. Do you remember the spinner questions? You have a red, a blue, and two purple sections. Um, how about the marble questions? Billy's got five blue two orange and one yellow, yes? Oh, yeah. Now, with that happening, with five blues being in there, is it going to be a uniform probability model? No, because the chances of me pulling blue are greater, they're not equal. Whereas right here, why is this a uniform probability model? Because they all have the same chance of occurring. Does that make sense? Here's one way that I, I think that's easiest to kind of understand if you have a uniform or a non-uniform. If I was going to give you $100 to guess what number I was going to roll, what are you going to say? Like I said, I, what, what number? I'm going to roll this dice right here. What number do you think is going to happen? And if you get it right, I'm going to give you $100. You're going to go, uh, four, right? You're just, you're going to like, 
I don't know. There's because there's nothing that is sticking out to you. Now let's go back to the marble section. Five blues, two yellows, and one orange, or whatever. I two orange and one yellow. If you pick the right color of the marble, I'll give you a hundred dollars. What color are you choosing? And if someone says yellow, you're going to look at them and go, you freaking moron. Right? And there's someone in this class that might do that anyway, so we won't get to that. But, why Why would you look at them like that? Because it's not uniform. When, you, when, when someone picks four, you're not going to look at them and go, you're an idiot. Everybody knows you choose three. Like... Because it doesn't matter what number you pick, the chances are all the same. So it's a crap, and they call it a crap shoot. You ever heard of that term? Someone say, oh man, that was just a crap shoot. That's because it's, it's a, just a guess. It doesn't, there's no better chance of you guessing it right. It's not like, you know what? You're a smart person if you pick this because the chances are better here. It doesn't matter if you're really smart or really dumb. Whatever number you throw out there, you're going to have the same chance. It's called a crap shoot. Yeah, that was just a crap shoot anyways. I just threw it, or they kind of thrown a dart. You know, like, just don't know, there's really no chance. Yeah, whatever, it's going to be the same. That's a uniform model. Does that make sense? That's one way that I know if something's uniform, I kind of look at it and I go, it's not like one's better than the other. Okay? We already talked about this. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you is the form of writing. You see this right here. As soon as you see that, what does that tell you? It's the complement of the event. So if I said, what's the probability of three mapping for a number two? Right? It would be one, it would be three, is my outcome I want, versus one, two, three, four, five, and six. You with me? If I said the complement to that event, what would be my desired outcomes then? One, two, four, five, six. Because the complement to that event is everything that's not three. Does that make sense? So it would be five out of six. Yes. And together, what do they add up to? Well, six out of six, which is one. You with me on this? So when you see this, they're talking about the complement of that event. What does the probability of an event plus the probability of the complement of that event have to add up to? What have we talked about, Hannah? One. Every time. It's actually an event. No. Because it's, it's the event and everything that's not that event. And that all has to be the whole sample size. So it has to be out of total. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to give you one, and I want you to tell me the complement. What if I said rolling an even number? What would be the complement to that event? What would be the complement? Rolling a odd number. Okay. What if I said rolling a number greater than or equal to 2? What would be the complement? Rolling a number less than 2. Are you with me? You understand complements, right? Rolling a six, what's the complement to it? Not rolling a six would be its complement. Anything else? So it's like yin and yang. Sure. Everything that's not white part is part of the black part, sure. Alright. The spinner is divided into four congruent sections. George and Maria are giving us our sample space. Which one do you guys think is correct? Here's the spinner. George gave us the sample space, and Maria gave us the sample space. Which one is correct? Look at your vocab. What does sample space say? It's a list of what? All of the outcomes. How many outcomes does it look like George has? Are there only two outcomes up here? But how many outcomes total are there? But then that would mean that there's only two outcomes. 
there was the little side pieces. Side, how many outcomes are there? Pieces are like uniform. Yes. There are four different outcomes that can happen. If I spin the spinner, how many sections can I land on? Four different sections. What are my chances? Because if I only have two, right? Then remember, it should add up. The shaded plus the unshaded should add up to one, right? So it should be one out of two plus one out of two, which would mean that it's me my whole. That's not, this is not a half and a half, is it? You've got to list all of the possibilities, even the repeated ones. Because yes, I understand, I can only pull an orange, I can only pull a blue, I can only pull a yellow. But they're not uniforms. There's a whole bunch of, you know, it's a much better chance of me pulling a blue. You with me? Now, so Maria is correct. Now, what is the probability of landing on a shaded section? Three out of four. What is it of unshaded? One fourth. What are these guys called to each other? Compliments. Compliments. <laughs> We're doing all right. This is a uh, probability model, and it's one of the non-uniform because it's a, you have a much better chance of getting the shaded versus unshaded. If, again, if I gave you this model and I said I'll give you hundred dollars if you pick the right, just either it's shaded or unshaded. You with me? Now, how can they change this question up here? What if this was blue, green, orange, and yellow? Now, what does it become? Uniform. A uniform. Have you ever seen a spinner where the pie wasn't cut? I don't know, say Wheel of Fortune, and they have a million dollar section on there? Is it the same strip? Is it as wide as all the other ones? No. It's that one little sliver. So would that be a uniform chance of, like, let's say you guys ever seen the, the go to Chuck E. Cheese or whatever, and they've got, you can make a bet, and you say, if I, I think it's going to be in the red section, you get five tickets. But then they have that one little sliver one that's blue, and if you took that section, you get 50 tickets. Why does hardly anyone, you know, ever get 50 tickets? Because no one takes the chance of getting it to be blue. Because it's just that one little section that ball that has to land in. And the chances of that happening are not very good. Which is why you get 50 tickets if you take the chance. But you're probably not going to ever win. You with me? Okay? So they can do that too by how big the sections are to make it uniform versus non-uniform. Could this spinner be a uniform section? Yes, if this was red, green, yellow, blue, whatever, the chances of getting those guys are all equivalent. If they cut the sections smaller to fit each other, that would be, again, another example of a non-uniform. That kind of stuff will play into this eventually. Right now we're just really getting the basics and making sure we understand sample size, event, complement, all those words. Yeah? So, like, let's say we actually have a spinner. If we spot it four times, we're in theory supposed to get appreciated at one. But that doesn't always happen. No. So what what happens is that you will find out, we'll talk about this. The more that you did that, if you did that a thousand times, the more you do it, the closer it's actually going to fall to this guy right here. We understand that in real life it's not going to perfectly. But if you go a million. I would almost guarantee that it's going to become three-fourths, and this will become one-fourth. The more you do it, the more it becomes closer to the actual. And we'll do some studies where you'll see that it actually does happen. It's, this is actually kind of cool. Um, it's stuff that you'll see that's definitely applicable. Um, last thing I want to talk about, which is this thing, and we're going to get there. Eventually. So we talked about um, some parts heard, maybe you didn't understand them before, we're going to dive into them a lot deeper. This is just the laying the ground floor. We're going to dive much deeper into this. Um, have you guys ever heard the word combination? Combination. Combination. Yeah. You've heard it, right? Where have you heard it before? Box. We'll talk about that. It drives me nuts. It shouldn't, in my eyes, should it be called combination? Have you guys ever heard the word permutation? Okay. 
the combination of permutations are similar. They're darn similar. They're very, very, very close. But here's what happens with the combination. I call up Pizza Hut. I want to order a pizza. I say, I want pepperoni, sausage, and uh, bacon. I want a meat lovers. So I get pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. But you call them up, and you go, I want bacon, pepperoni, and sausage. Have you changed your order? That's because that is called a combination. And in combinations, the order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you go bacon, sausage, pepperoni, pepperoni, bacon, sausage. It doesn't matter. As long as you have the same number, the same three in there, you're going to get the same pizza. You with me? I call a group up here. Okay? And I say, I want um, Sage, I want Matt, and I want Emily. Okay, I pick those three and I say, come up to the front. Does it matter which order I put them in to come up to the front? So, what if I said the first person I call is the president, the second person I call is the vice president, and the third person is scum? You thought I was going secretary. You went way beyond. What if I said that? Do you want to be called third? Well, you would. I'm glad you know what you are. Do you guys understand what I'm saying here? That is what is called a permutation. In a permutation, what matters? Order. In a combination, what doesn't matter? And why does that drive me crazy, this combination? It's called a lock combination. And in combination, order isn't supposed to matter. Well, if I give you the numbers, and I don't tell you the order, I just say, hey, use these three numbers, and it'll open the lock. Will that work? That like the game we played. That was a lot of fun. I should have done that again. Did we do it at the beginning of this year? Yeah. We did it, everyone. Remember I gave you the locks, and I gave you the three numbers, but you had to find the order that it was in. I didn't give it to you, and you had to keep spinning it. Maybe that was last year. No, I know it was out for two. Because it was a and no one got back with me. I don't know. Maybe I did it just my regular well, maybe we'll do it for a review one time. Oh, cool. It'd be weird to call, you know, your lock and over. It's not weird. But it should. Yeah, it's but it's technically, it's technically it's cool the anyway, so of course but it should be called a lock permutation. It should not be called, and it only sounds weird because you've always called it all your life a lock or combination. But technically, it should be called a permutation. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And we'll dive into that a lot more later on. And there's going to be some things. So hold on. Just to preview some stuff, does it matter if I pick out a marble and then I pick out a second marble? Only if I don't return the marble. And we're going to talk about all these kind of situations where you take the marble and they're going to say, and you keep that marble. What's the, what's the, what's the probability of you pulling an orange and a blue? Well, if I return the blue back in, it changes than if I keep the blue out when I first end. We're going to get into that. So it gets really kind of tricky, but kind of fun at the same time where you're going, wow, this is actually something that I'll have the chance of using. Um, so I enjoyed probability and stats. Have a good day, guys.